Hi, how you doing? My name is Dimitri and today I'm going to show you how to brew beer. This will actually be my first time, so I hope you can work with me. Uh, as you can see, I'm spraying down the countertops. I'm going to go ahead and um, clean everything you see here on top of the stove, including the pots, the funnel, um, everything, the tubing. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and start. I want to let everybody know who's watching this video that I am cleaning today with star sand. And if you uh, go ahead and follow me down here, we have some star sand we're using it right now. It's actually one ounce per five gallons, but since we don't want to waste so much water and I think we can clean with what we have here, um, we're only using two and a half gallons, um, so about half an ounce. Hello, I'm Dimitri, and here we're cleaning the pot. Hi, I'm Dimitri, and right here what you're seeing me do is filter my water. Uh, I live in Tampa, and since we have hard water and a lot of chlorine, um, I don't want it to affect the taste of our beer today, so we're gonna go ahead and run that through a carbon filter. And then if you look over here, uh, with everything that we've sanitized, including the counter over here, um, we're already getting uh, straight to work. We're heating some water to 160 degrees for our, our mash, which we have all the grains right here. And right now I'm using this filtered water that's in the bedroom cup. I'm gonna put it in the next pot um, so we can bring that to temperature for the sparging process. So we're having uh, everything run in motion simultaneously. Hey everybody, it's me, Dimitri. So I was heating the water to boil my mash and I actually got too hot in temperature. So I followed the recipe and the instructions. Um, and I added a little bit more water, just about a cup, and took it off the heat source, just so it could come back down to 160. Um, we don't want it to be too hot. So Hi, I'm Dimitri. And uh, before we had overheated uh, our water, so right now it's at 160 degrees, which is the ideal temperature for all grain brewing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our grain and make our mash. As you can see here, I have a one gallon kit of grain right here. I'm just going to add it straight into it like so. And we're going to go ahead and mix this as, uh, as it steeps. Um, until it has a oatmeal-like consistency. Hi, I'm Dimitri. Come closer. So right now we're cooking up the mash and I know it doesn't look very active because there's not very many uh, bubbles going on, but it's not boiling. Remember, boiling is when the gases um, are produced and also right now it's just really hot um and it's in stable condition um it hasn't been going too high or too low in temperature um and right now it's currently 146 degrees so that's right in between the 144 and 152 that we want so um i personally did not realize how low my my, my stove uh, would have to be to cook this i thought it would be around the six um because i thought high was pretty high and eight was pretty high that usually you know boil water eight to high um but this I mean, 160 is very far from 212 boiling, I realize that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on low and um, continue cooking this for the next 30 minutes. We're at the 30 minute mark. And if you go ahead and look at the spatula, you'll see how dark the liquid is as it drips off. So we're really making a nice imperial style, nice roasty mash. So stay tuned. All right, hi, I'm Dimitri. And this is a sterile spatula, so don't worry. Well, right here, as you can see, and like I said, this is my first experience, so I'm learning here with you. Um, this is a lot more thick and uh, substantial, I'd like to, I think that's a better word, um, um, of an experience, right? Literally, like this is a thick slop of grain, and I never realized beer came from this. So this is pretty interesting. Um, like Imperial Stouts, which this is, um, the bubbles are already a uh, slight tannish, brownish color. So that's pretty interesting to see during the mash process as that's what the foam looks like or the head looks like when you drink the beer. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this in a little bit longer and try to keep this at a consistent 160 degrees um, for about an hour's worth of time. Hi, I'm Dimitri. And right now we're gonna go ahead and turn on the temperature for the uh, excess water we're gonna use to sparge. We have 25 minutes left um, in the mashing process. It's still looking good. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right on that, you know, future. Hi, thing. I'm Dimitri. And right now, uh, we're at the end of our 60 minute timer. So we're gonna bring our mash up to 170 degrees. So I'm gonna take this from low, I'm trying to 
bring it to like a two. I'm thinking uh, bring it up a little bit, maybe two and a half to three. Um, and meanwhile, we have our water over here right at 170 for the sparge process. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so as you can see, we're at 170. So we're gonna go ahead and start our sparging process. Hi, I'm Dimitri, let's sparge. Oh boy, not gonna lie, I'm kinda nervous about this. Here we go. All right, oh, a little splattering going on, that's okay. Everything, go ahead and let that drain a little bit. So I didn't expect this much grain for my strainer, right? We're doing this live action. So I'm gonna get this spatula over here and move the grain, kind of work with it, push it away over there. And actually, while I move this, I'm seeing a lot more liquids passing through. That can be good. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way so I can go ahead and continue to sparge the rest of my grain. Because all the grain deserves to be sparged. Here we go. Okay, so divisions here just so that when I go to pour the rest of it now that I've squeezed out the majority of it okay I think you can cut it hi I'm Dimitri so we encountered some problems um, I realized that the strainer was not big enough to hold all the grain that we just mashed up so what we're gonna go ahead and do right now is uh, make kind of like a strainer patty, so to say. We're gonna fill this all up, kind of compress, but not too much. Make some slits so the water can pass through. And we're gonna go ahead and get our sterilized, star stand uh, sterilized measuring cup. Fill it with water and sparge this grain. And then with the excess grain, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put it in this sterilized pot. So let's go ahead and get uh, to it. I want to be careful because this water is hot. It is 170 degrees. Here we go. We're going to... So I'm going to just pass this warm water over the grain. I'm going to go ahead and get all those sugars, all those fermentable sugars um, out of the grain itself, wash it out right here. You know, I read online that all these little bubbles that you see, that's actually the proteins and the enzymes, um, and that's what creates the surface tension for the liquid. So this is pretty cool to see in person. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and shake this out because there is some remainder liquid. That's our beer, so we want all little, every little bit of it. Yeah, we have plenty of water, so this is great. All right, so it's right here in the pot. Now we're gonna go for batch number two. Here we go.
All right, so all the grain is, uh, <laughs> is out of the pot. I'm gonna go ahead and use this thermometer here, get a little creative and scoop off the remainder of the grain off the spatula. There you go. And by the way, this uh, spoon utensil holder is sterilized, so don't worry. So we're gonna go ahead and press the second batch of grain. Never realized how much patience um, it took to brew beer, but I can definitely understand why the monks in Belgium and so on do it, because there's a sort of peace and tranquility with it. You know, just take your time and brew it out. All right, so here we go for the second round of sparging. I've made a lot of slits in the grain um, because the first time we sparged, I realized um, maybe I needed more um, entryways for the water. So here we go, second sparge. This water's still warm, still steamy, as you can see. We have it there at one and a half on our stove. Still very efficient. So here we go. We'll take it nice and easy. Take the water tension into account and then pour it out. And I wanna make sure to pour it all around um, the grain. Because I feel like the water stimulates physically um, the grain and it really shakes the sugars out of there. And all that flavor. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So we just finished the second sparging process. And right now I think, uh, I don't know, this is an eight quart gap, uh, pot. So I think we're about four quarts. We need to hit five. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the remainder of this grain into the pot with the, with the other grain. I'm gonna pour the wort out of the eight quart back into the five quart. Doesn't matter if there's some remainder grain, we're gonna strain it all out anyway. And we're gonna try to see what we can do to compile all of it back into the strainer. I'm gonna see if I can press it in, you know, I don't know, work with it. Um, and then pass it through once more because that's definitely um, what we need to do. It's recommended on the recipe. So we need to pass the wort through the grain one more time. So let's get to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my spatula. I'm gonna scoop off from the top. I know it might be a little weird angling right now. That's okay, I'm just scooping grain out of a strainer. Oh my Lord. You know, uh, this, off, th this looks awfully similar to quinoa. Um, you know, I think that's pretty cool. Kind of familiar in a way. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave the strainer right here, it doesn't matter, it's okay. And this pod's very good, has a lip. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it. Oops. Spillage, that's okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, so bring beers a little messy. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So, as we saw in the previous uh, cut, I still have a little bit of beer. Don't worry, I took care of that. I cleaned it. Still gonna get my security deposit back when we're finished with the lease here in the apartment. But um, with this mess, I realized um, that I put my strainer back on top of my green. And that's not okay, because we're gonna go ahead and re-sparge all of this, and if there's grain on the bottom of the strainer, it's gonna go right back into the wart. So we all make mistakes here, this is my first time, but don't worry, we got the strainer right back into the star sand. Still looks good, looks a little murky, looks like it's working, that's exactly what we want. So yeah, we'll get right back to you. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So after that little uh, grain fiasco with the outside of the strainer, we went ahead and sterilized it in the star sand and we put it on the counter. It's been sitting there for a minute, so it's good to go. We're gonna go ahead and put this on top of our eight quart pot. Um, and let's see how we do this. We're gonna try to fit all this grain. It's all right here in this pot. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and sparge it with the wort we have right here. And this wort, I mean, just to describe it a little bit before we go on it, I, it the darkest dark chocolate you've ever seen. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And, and these bubbles, I mean, so the bubbles have a rainbow pattern themselves in, in hue. 
Uh, they lean more towards the blue side, if anything. You're not seeing a lot of red, it's more blue. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if you can see that from the camera. But yeah, let's go ahead and proceed with putting the grain in the strainer and then re-sparging it that one final time. I'm kind of hoping that I can fit all the grain at once. And then when I put the wart on top of everything, you know, if it takes 20 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, you know, if it takes a while, that's fine. But I'm, I'd rather be able to fit all the grain at once and have to use the wart um, and the grain and split it up and do all that. So let's see what we can get away with here. I'll tell you what, the grain smells awfully like bird food. Sunflower seeds? I don't know, excuse me, but it's something you feed your pet? I don't know. You wouldn't eat this, right? Maybe? So, let's see. I like sunflower seeds. And... Chocolate sunflower seeds? These are like, I believe these are chocolate malts and roasted malts in this batch, in this blend. I have to read up on it again, but I believe this recipe was made by a brewery out in uh, San Antonio and they were actually doing it for the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, all, or I believe 10% of the proceeds goes to the organization as a, as a donation. So, you know, I think it's important to mention it now that in, in these times, these worrying times, the pandemic and everything else going on. So I thought it would be my way to pitch in and also um, take on this class fully. So I thought that was pretty cool. So, <laughs> I thought I could fit all this grain, but this is looking bleak. You know, I might try to do like a volcano style, kind of push it along the walls, kind of like sandcastle style or something. Make like a volcano, kind of pile it on, don't let it spew, you know, we don't want any of that grain in our jug, that'd be awful. Can you imagine? That'd be, can you imagine what bacterial infection would happen if you did that? Um, this I'm almost done I mean I think I think in the most extreme way possible this is attainable I think we got what maybe three spatulas left we could totally do this guys oh no oh no all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and take a cut and kind of work this but we definitely got some grain in the pot. Hi, so we're gonna see what we do. So as you can see with the spillages over here, too much grain, um, it's starting to get a little complicated. Again, we need a bigger strainer, so I know that for the future. And this is only, I just wanna remind everybody, this is only for a one gallon kit. So I, I think the best thing from my experience is uh, just get the net, the grain net, so you can uh, just throw, you know, use it later and all. Um, but besides all that, um, we're gonna go ahead and scoop up the <laughs> the wart and put it through the grain. Um, we're gonna split it up in two batches. So let's see how we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop this up. This is super, I mean, the sediment, it, it, this liquid is very uh, sedimentary. Um, has a lot of floating particular matter. Right, let's go ahead and pour it. Is this chocolate milk? Just kidding guys, this is beer. Imperial Stout, black is beautiful. So we're gonna let that seep through and proceed. All right, so it looks like the uh, re-sparge, you know, I don't know what the term is, but the re-sparging, it looks like it's still draining. 
So we're gonna go ahead, we did one quart, since we have four quarts over here, um, according to the marking on our pot. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another quart, uh, straight. Technically, it says about three quarter quart, so three quarter, three quarter, I'm about a 175, 1.75 quarts. Not too exactly, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour this again. And I'm noticing that the color is getting much lighter on the grain itself. So I really feel like the sugar, I feel like I can really see the sugar is getting seeped away with that liquid. Which is pretty cool to see. All right, so here's the second batch. We're gonna go ahead and put it back in the strainer. And uh, you know, if we get a little grain in the pot, it doesn't really matter though, because the bitch just fell in right now. Uh, I mean, I know it. I know it has to make some sort of difference, but we're gonna reboil all this with the hops. So I want to remind everybody about that. So I'm gonna try my best. Obviously, I don't. I'm not gonna make it happen. But if one or two go in. We're gonna go ahead and press out all this green. And we're gonna go ahead and spark the remainder of the work that's right over here. So this is pretty much it with the sparging process. We're gonna go ahead and um, filter out all the liquid and then bring it back to a uh, low boil to add the hops. Hi, it's Dimitri. And right now we're in the, the learning corner of the kitchen. Why do I say that? Well, as you can see here, um, we're at the end of the sparging process. I rinse all the wort through it. Um, and I put the remainder of the hot water, the warm water through it to rinse it off. And you can see the grain is very light colored, um, a light, pale, golden, you know, whatever terminology you want to use. And when you compare it to the green that I threw out because I uh, was done with it, you can see it's much lighter than its first half. So I'm kind of disappointed in myself, but uh, not too disappointed. Can't be too hard on myself because I've learned now that before I should have before I dumped this in the trash, I should have ran it with the warm water, cleaned out the extra sugars that we see here and all that. <clears throat> um, and then proceeded to throw it out. So I think this is a great learning lesson, not only for myself, but anyone who watches this video, um, understand that you should rinse your grain before throwing it out, I think at least once. So um, not, not, not too bad for the first process, I still managed to rinse out with the warm water the second half, so we're still gonna go. If you look over here, our, uh, our uh, wort is looking very rich, very brown. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and bring that up to temperature uh, and start uh, the hopping process. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So again, with all this learning and beginner brewing stuff, um, I didn't realize uh, how ready the stove had to be to uh, have the wort um, up to a boil and all so on. So I think um, during the sparging process, I might either have the pot warmed or I might bring the stove to temperature and then kind of like just transfer the pot while I'm doing the second part of the sparge. I don't know, kind of work with it, um, do my own personal touch. But right now we are currently with the wort and we're trying to bring it to a boil um, and we're trying to bring it to what is called the breaking point. 
in which it begins to uh, foam heavily. So we're gonna reduce the heat once it starts foaming and then take it off the stove. So um, all in all, we're, we're on track. Um, maybe we can improve the timing, but um, I think we're still, we still have something good here. It, st it still smells very chocolatey. It smells very roasty um, from the other pots that we've since cleaned by now. Um, we, we tasted the liquid itself. It was very sugary, but very roasty again in itself. So um, I think we still have a very good body here. So let's see what comes of this. Dimitri, I wasn't paying attention to my brew. This is what happens. It spilled a little bit, not a problem. It did the hot break. So that's perfectly fine. It came to a boil and now we're gonna let it roast as we stir it. This is perfectly okay. If you look right here, right? The, the perfect yield would have been like 10.6. Uh, bottles, I believe it was. I don't remember the exact calculation off the top of my head. So right now we're losing a little bit. So we're still at like 10 bottles, nine bottles. So we're still doing good on the yield. And we actually had extra water. In fact, we, we're doing perfectly fine. Don't even worry about that. Keep moving forward. Okay, so we're gonna stir this and make sure it doesn't boil over again. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So we added the hops into our wort. Professor, I'm sorry, I used my hands. Uh, the temperature is gonna kill the bacteria. So hopefully it doesn't get sour because <laughs> I am so sorry. So besides that, we're bringing it up to temperature. I have it on my stove around eight. Uh, as you remember to get it to 160, um, I left it at about one and a half for the wort. So you know, eight's a really strong um, number for my stove right now for the beer. But the reason I have it there is because I'm trying to bring it to a boil with the hops um, for the initial part of the boiling process. And then I'm gonna add more hops and then hops again at the end. So we're gonna try to keep it consistent. And then honestly, right here, right here on camera, I'm about to put it down on six um, and, and, you know, try to get it stable but hot. Come with me. Let's look at my beer. So, as you can see, it's starting to move a little bit. You got a lot of steam going on. I kicked it up back from six to eight um, because I felt like it was a little slow. I need to get it to boiling and now we're seeing that it is coming to boiling. So it's a very nice, rich color. If you come with me, we're gonna get a little closer with me. Look at that, rich dark chocolate milk beautiful i'm dimitri and right now we're at the 40 minute mark 444 so we're gonna go ahead and put in um our second batch of hops I'm gonna steal some from this side to get a little hoppy up in here. All right, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dimitri. And we're gonna put the last set of hops into this batch of beer we're brewing. We have some powder here, so we're gonna go ahead and try to scoop all the dust either onto the spatula or into the batch. Go ahead and mix this up a little bit. I'm Dimitri. So we're at, right now we're at the 60 minute mark. So we cut all the stove power. Um, we're gonna keep it hot and, and leave it where it's at right now. But we're also gonna add the brown sugar um, into it. This is what the yeast is gonna use to ferment. Now I'm gonna mix it. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So if you look right here, we already have our ice bath ready. Uh, it's really cold, it hurts to touch. So that's perfect for what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and get this beer, this war, our future beer, sorry. And I'm gonna put it in the ice bath to get it nice and chilled. So, um, that's where we're at right now. We're gonna go ahead and put it into the carboy and uh, pitch our yeast. So stay tuned. I'm Dimitri. So, sorry, I have the hiccups. So right now I have a strainer, which I've already sterilized. I have the wort that's ready to go. It's, around, it's about 70 degrees right now. So we're about to get this going. So I have a sterilized funnel. I'm gonna put the strainer on top of the funnel and I don't have enough hands to show you this right now, but essentially I'm gonna put the wort through the strainer, through the funnel and into the carboy. Right, I'm Dimitri. Here we go.
Oops. This is what was left over in the strainer after we passed it on through and put it into the drain. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So, right now our wort is in our carboy. It's right at the one gallon marker. So we're gonna go ahead and pitch our yeast. I'm gonna make sure to take a, make a really small hole so that it doesn't spill all over the place, so. All right, so I've opened the yeast packet and I'm trying to make a really small hole so I don't spill it everywhere. But it also needs to be big enough for things to come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip it one more time. And then we're gonna go ahead and pitch this yeast. All right, here we go. I'm Dimitri, and right now I'm gonna swirl up this carboy a little bit so that the yeast can move around, get comfy in their new home. They're gonna be here for the next four weeks. So we're gonna get them comfortable right here with a little, little swirling action. All right, so we have this screw cap right here for the carboy. We're gonna go ahead and put that on through. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our siphon from over here and feed it just not too much just about an inch um, past the screw cap right there and with the end of this I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a bowl with some sanitized solution some star sand the reason is um, since this is an imperial stout um, you know by name imperial it already has higher alcohol uh, content so with the extra sugar the, the yeast is gonna ferment more produce more gas so since we don't need all that gas right now, um, we're gonna expunge it with the siphon. And then um, after about two or three days, once the phasing goes down, we'll take the siphon out of the bottle. Um, of course, this is all gonna be in a dark place. But we'll take the siphon out of the bottle and then put our airlock. Hi, I'm Dimitri. 
So we're gonna walk on over to my closet over here. I've already designated this spot um, so that there's not a lot of light being involved. I don't want this to get light struck in or light stricken. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my beer in here. It's gonna be temperature controlled, usually room temperature around 75 degrees. I keep my apartment 75 to 77. So we're gonna go ahead and put the siphon end um, of this, well, siphon, uh, right into the bowl. And then we have our wart right over here and we're gonna let it ferment for the next two or three days. Hi, I'm Dimitri, and today's the day after we brewed our beer. Let's take a look on and see what it looks like. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm not trying to use too much flash now um, and, and light strike the beer, um, but if you listen closely, you can definitely hear the air is transferring through the siphon um, and going into the sanitized bowl of star sand. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, since this is a higher alcohol beer um, and there's more sugar, there's gonna be more carbon dioxide being um, produced. So for the first two days, um, or until it stops bubbling, maybe it might take three days, um, we're supposed to let the air run off and then put the air lock on it. So this is still day one. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So we just got rid of the siphon and the excess carbonation, and now I'm gonna go ahead and install the airlock to create a, a specific condition batch. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So right now we're in the phase of bottling. As you can see, we have our used bottles over there, our recycled product, right, Save the Earth. Um, so they're going to go ahead and dry off. Uh, we already rinsed star sand through it, as well as the pot over here. And um, what I'm currently doing is I'm gonna go ahead and put three tablespoons of honey um, into this one half cup of water, um, dissolve it within it, and that will start the second hand fermentation to create the carbonation within our desired bottles. For the record, I am Greek. And so I have this Greek honey called Thimadi honey. And Thimadi is thyme. So this is a very sweet, light, almost brown sugary um, sense of flavor which I think will pair very nicely with the Imperial Stout, given that it's a chocolatey coffee flavor. Uh, and again, I'm half Cuban too, half Greek, half Cuban. This is gonna be very close um, in culture for me as far as Cuban coffee and this Greek honey. So I wanna be very careful here. If you don't make a mess while you're working in the kitchen, you're not doing it right. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So we've added the three tablespoons of honey and now we're gonna go ahead and mix it in, really try to dissolve it in there. Initially, uh, this is an amateur thought I had, I was going to microwave the water and then put the honey in it so that it would dissolve properly or as thoroughly as possible, but it came to me. We cool down the wort and the boil before we add the yeast because too much heat will produce off flavors like apple cider uh, vinegar. So I promptly stopped myself and we are just going to hope for the best and, and trust the yeast and their ability to consume the honey, even though it might not be 100% dissolved. Hi, I'm Nervous, and this is my partner, Leanna. She's gonna help me siphon this, so let's try our best here. I am removing the airlock, placing it off screen. I am uncapping the carboy. Oh boy. Mm, there we go. Put a little stuck there. Here we go. And Leanna's gonna go ahead and hold the wrapping cane 
with the rubber stopper at the end. Put it right here, please. Not straight down, try to hurt it. Keep going, doesn't matter. Okay, so there is a, I mean, a fraction of what was uh, produced left in the carboy. Of course, we're gonna go ahead and cut our losses because we don't wanna suck up any of the yeast. This isn't some Belgian style triple or some blonde, right? So this is not gonna be a high yeast profile beer. And here's the remainder of our beer. I'll tell you what, from personal experience, it's already very alcoholic. I mean, this was supposed to be, I believe, 9.2, if not 9.5% ABV. And even without the sugar um, that we've introduced, or especially without the sugar we've introduced, it's very roasty flavor, it's very astringent, just as its aroma presents itself. And it's, it's just strong right off the bat. Hi, I'm Dimitri. So right now, we're filling the siphon with star sand so that it can develop enough pressure to start sucking our beer from the pot and into the bottles. Okay, folks, so as I'm learning um, and doing this for the first time, I'm realizing I'm adding too much oxygen per bottle. So I'm gonna try to really go smooth pour here so it doesn't create the bubbles. There we go. I'll tell you what, this is very sugary smelling. I mean, something like Cocoa Puffs or something, really. Cocoa Puffs has a hint of coffee in it. Hi, I'm Dimitri. Let's cap. No cap. Hi, I'm Dimitri, and right here we've harvested about nine bottles um, from our Black is Beautiful mix. I just want to say thanks to the brewery over in San Antonio for doing such a productive recipe for our society, allowing us to donate uh, some of the profits to charity. I want to go ahead and thank you, Professor Ackerman, because without this I would never have been able to experience this. And I want to go ahead and thank myself. Because I made this with my partner, Liana. Liana, thank you. I love you. Have a great day.